Jindo Bri Cheshnalo. Today, guys, I'm going to be sharing a list of seven things that Americans do differently than Polish people. So, I guess before going over to Poland, I had that American mentality that everyone did these things a certain way, but when in reality, that's not the case. I'm talking about different, more subtle things that we do differently. So, today I'm going to be sharing that list. So, without further ado, guys, let's just get started. So, first things first, I wanted to say that most of these are really just a generalization, and I don't know if all Polish people and all Americans are going to be doing these certain things a certain way but i'd like to get started with numbers letters times and dates so starting with numbers i noticed that the numbers one seven and nine are written differently by polish people than by americans so on average what i've noticed is that polish people write their ones with just a slash and then a vertical line which americans will typically do the slash vertical line and then either a bottom horizontal line or it'll be just the vertical line with no slashes or other marks at all. And then I also noticed with the number seven that there's typically a line dashed through the center of it, which Americans don't do that. And then the number nine is kind of a confusing one for me because it looks like how I would write a G, but typically it's written like a normal nine, but on the bottom, there's a bit of a slash that tilts upward. So yeah, that's just one way that Polish people write their numbers differently than Americans. So what sparked this idea of writing letters and numbers and things like that? Well, my girlfriend and I write each other letters and I've noticed that whenever I'm reading her letters and stuff, that she writes a bit differently than how I would. The one thing I noticed about her letters is that she typically puts a lot of cursive in her handwriting. Now, for the most part, most Americans don't write in cursive anymore, and I think that's really just a thing of like the older generation. And actually, I don't even think they teach it in schools anymore. It's kind of weird, but I guess, you know, over time, people found it to be less practical and they just stuck to regular handwriting. So another thing I noticed is that with sales prices and things like that, they're actually written differently than how you would write them in America. So for example, if you wanted to write $1,000.50, you would put a comma after the one, and then you would just do a decimal before 50. Now, and I could be wrong about this, but it seems like in Poland, sometimes they use a comma to separate long numbers and things like that. But for the most part, they'll just put a gap in between the numbers. So for example, it would be like a one space zero 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 comma 50. So instead of decimals, they use commas there, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then they put Zwati at the end of the number instead of dollar before the number like you see in America. All right, so going along with numbers, Americans and Polish people write their dates differently. So for example, if you wanted to write August 5th, 2020, in Poland, you would write 5-8-2020. And then in America, you would write 8, 5, 2020. So that was just something else that I noticed because looking at papers or expiration dates, I'd be like, oh my God, this already expired like two months ago and we just bought it when really just the dates were mixed up. So I thought that was kind of interesting and something new that I learned about, I guess, what Europe does compared to America. So another thing is time. And I noticed on my girlfriend's phone that she had her clock in the 24 hour setting. And I was thinking, wow, she's really obsessed with the military. She likes military time, etc., which is what we would call it here in America is just military time or 24 hour time, which I actually, I don't really hear that often. I just hear military time. And so I was like, is this normal? Does everyone do this? And she was like, yeah. So so I learned then and there that Polish people use 24 hour time instead of 12 hour time. And you can also say the time in 24 hours. So for example, you can say 17 o'clock or you know other things like that, etc. if you wanted to describe the time in Polish, or you can even say the 12 hour time if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Let me know in the comment section down below if that's true. Whereas in America, you wouldn't use 24 hour time when telling someone the time, and instead you would just use the 12 hour format. Now, whether you have the 24 hour format on your your phone or watch here in America is really just up to you and you can have the preference if you want. Most ex-veterans or people who were in the military use this because in the military that's just the time setting that they use is 24 hours, which is more universal for around the world. I'm guessing that's why they use it and it's probably just easier overall. But yeah, for the most part, Americans just use the 12 hour format. Now, another thing is that Poland uses the metric system and the US uses the imperial system. And I, I would say they use the imperial system for the most part, but when it comes to science and school and things like that, you actually use, and here in America, you use the metric system. So, you know, for science equations, you know, for physics and chemistry, you're using only metric. And it's just a much better system to use when it comes to science and things like that. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why are we using that? Well, I guess it's just because it's too late at this point and people just don't want to change the books. So I guess we're just going to continue on with the imperial system. I'm pretty sure we're a bit easier than the UK, though, because I think in the UK, 
to use Imperial Mix with Metric a little bit more often into daily life, so things are just kind of complicated and all over the place and not just to one system. Now don't hold me against that because I'm not entirely sure, but I think the UK uses a bit more mixed of uh, the two systems. Alright, so the second thing that Americans do differently than Polish people is driving. So it seems like Polish people drive a little bit more aggressively than Americans on average, but at the same time, it seems like Polish people are more aware of what's going on and they also stick to the rules a bit more. And this is in terms of like moving over when you're in the passing lane and things like that, which I've already talked about on my channel. But another thing I noticed that Americans do differently than Polish people is turning on red lights. And yes, that's actually legal. So on the intersection, sometimes about, I would say like 20% of the times, there is a sign that says no turn on red. But for the most part, if there isn't that sign there, which is probably like 80% of the time, you can just turn on red. So essentially, if you're stopped at the intersection and other traffic is moving along, if no one's moving along at that time and you see that it's good to go, it's basically a stop sign in a sense and you can then make a right. But that's only right. You can't go left or anything like that. So the third one on my list is the size of produce. So I think over time here in America, everything has really just been genetically modified to be bigger and bigger, whether that's fruits or vegetables. And if you actually watch one of my videos where I was making pierogies, then you can see there that we didn't really know what to do because the recipe was in Polish and it called for an onion and when we went to the grocery store here we noticed that the size of the onions were basically like cantaloupes and they were just massive. The recipe calls for one onion but Adriana is saying that compared to Polish standards this is almost like two onions so we don't really know what to do. Yeah. It's almost like watermelon. We figured there's the Polish onion size and then there's the American onion size. So instead, I think we actually use like half of the onion. All right, so the fourth one on my list is getting around. And most Americans really will only take their cars anywhere, even if that's just half a mile away or, you know, just like a kilometer away. It's really a driving culture here for the most part. But at the same time, the U.S. is really only designed for cars. There's really a lack of sidewalks here. And I guess because of that, most Americans just simply don't walk whereas in Poland I would say most Poles drive but at the same time there's lots of access to public transport which is really good compared to like anywhere else here in America so that and then also just walking around in general it seems like you know I guess more of Europe is centered around walking for the most part so I would say in Poland it's more of a mix at how people are gonna get around whether that's by car train bus uh, you know whatever bicycle walking Whereas in America, it's really just car or airplane. And going along with that, I noticed that in Poland, the only drive through option you had was actually at McDonald's. Whereas here in the States, you can go through a drive through and, you know, get liquor. You can go to the bank. You can go to the pharmacy. Like there's a ton of different options of drive throughs I mean, it really is a driving culture here. All right. So the fifth thing on my list is dress. Now in America, you know, most people would just wear whatever they're wearing, go to the grocery store, whether that's, you know, sweat pants or if you're a girl like leggings or you know even athleisure wear for both genders and you know they just go to the grocery store and like who cares that's it right now in Poland that's completely different most people will really dress up even if they're just going to the grocery store that actually like shocked me that people you know care that much about what they looked like before going to the store and also speaking about athleisure i didn't really see athleisure clothes really at all in poland i mean obviously besides the gym whereas here in america a lot of for example women will wear leggings and like athletic shoes and you know just like a regular you know comfy t-shirt like for me i think it's pretty easy to tell when there's an american in europe and that's the same thing with even just like wearing a sports cap like most polish people don't really wear hats at all and if you wear a hat inside i guess it's pretty disrespectful for old people that's what a lot of polish people have told me in the comments in my previous vlogs and videos so another thing i wanted to talk about is temperature so for example here in america sometimes guys actually some of my friends do this they'll wear a t-shirt and shorts and nearly freezing degree temperatures let's just say spring is coming and it's around the 50 degree temperature mark you know sometimes Americans will wear just shorts and a t-shirt I've even seen Americans wear shorts 
and a t-shirt and flip-flops just outside in nearly freezing degree temperatures and they just don't even care most of the time the heating is like so hot that you just go inside a building and you start sweating anyways so sometimes the comfortable thing to do is really just wear a t-shirt and shorts whereas in poland oh my god i've seen people wear scarves and a coat and a hat when it's like nearly 70 degrees outside i don't know what it is but there has to be something to it i feel like americans and polish people treat you know the cold so much differently but yeah this was just something really interesting to me because i saw people wearing like coats scarves hats on days that i was wearing just a t-shirt and shorts and i know like i definitely probably looked really weird outside and i don't know because to be honest like the heating systems are so hot in poland that every time i would go inside a restaurant or building i would just instantly start sweating and even if i had a sweater on or whatever i would just have to take everything off and to me that was just kind of annoying so I guess I'm just a lazy American and I don't like doing that, but I know I'll be ridiculed by everyone in the comments. So it is what it is. All right. So the sixth one on my list is about forms and job forms and really just forms in general. So when you're signing a form, whether this is like for your license or you're applying to school, you know, college or even just a job, whenever you're, for example, applying, or if you're just filling out the job paperwork after you got the job, you have to put what race you are and you actually have to put whether you're Hispanic or non Hispanic. Hispanic. And I know this is not done in Poland because obviously Poland is, you know, quite homogeneous and I guess race isn't the subject of talk, it's more of nationality. But with all that said, I figured most Polish people would kind of find that interesting that you have to fill out what race you are on really most forms and papers. And I don't know if this is about demographics, whether the jobs or, you know, companies that, that you're applying for has to fill out this information or this could be about diversity because I know like some companies have to, you know, meet a certain diversity quota, whether that's a certain amount of races of this, a certain amount of races of that. I've, I've heard things like that before and I've heard about this one even applying to colleges that some Asians have not been able to get into school because they at least think it's because of their race and same thing with white people I've heard that too I'm not really sure if that's true but I feel like for the most part it's really stupid and there's really just no need for it and why should you have to put that on the form what does it matter anyways right and instead the person should simply just hire you based on your character and not your race anyways I think it's stupid and I think it focuses on more division and bad than good so let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm kind of curious as to what you guys think about that. So the seventh point on my list is going out to eat. And I think that most Americans in general go out to eat much more often than in Poland. In Poland, I feel like most meals are really just made at home. Whereas in America, a lot of people go out to eat nearly every day, whether that's for work at lunch or maybe just once a week they go out to eat. And I don't think this is really a thing in Poland. So for example, I go out to eat nearly every single weekend and my girlfriend will like not go out to eat for a while until she goes out to eat to like get a pizza or something like that. But I think that's pretty common on average. Like I think most Poles in general just don't really go out to eat compared to Americans. All right, guys, that's actually all I have for the video today. So if you maybe learned something new or found something interesting, then let me know in the comment section down below. I'm eager to hear from you guys. And if you're interested in more American to Polish related content here on YouTube, then you can just check out some of the other videos on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Dziękuję. Do widzenia.